We are gathered here to fill you with fear and give you a treat for your ears as we invade your mind with our scary rhymes and some tales that can be gory. As you bear witness and sit here and listen to our poetic horror stories. Someone is clinging to me, but you can't see it. He is always here with me. He refuses to leave. He's sticking to me like glue. It's like he's my shadow. It is annoying every day to be followed by a ghost of a person you used to know. But this is my own fault, and now he won't go. The reason I believe he is attached to me is because I witnessed his death. You see, about 10 years ago, when I was walking home, I saw him fall in front of a car. He was run over and got stuck under the back wheel of the car and was dragged about 10 feet down the street. It was a gruesome scene, something that still haunts my dreams. Unfortunately, as he was falling, the last person he saw was me. He looked me dead in the eyes as he fell backwards. I can still remember his little body impacting with the car. Then he disappeared underneath. I stood there in shock. His blood splattered all over me. I was in disbelief. The police and paramedics were called and showed up quickly. But there was nothing they could do. He was pronounced deceased at the scene. And now... Here he is, his spirit taunting me, haunting me for all eternity. And this is why I'm on my way to see a psychic, so she can perform a cleansing, to release this spirit, to release his grip of me. This is just a friendly reminder to please like and comment to let us know how we are doing so far. We would love to hear from you all. And if you're new, please subscribe and become a part of the PHS crew. And we thank you. When I arrived, she had everything set up for me. As soon as I walked through the door, she said, I can feel a dark presence here with you now, and the presence isn't happy. I can feel the coldness and bitterness. This presence is very upset and pissed off. That is what I can sense from the being. I am happy you came when you did. This is a spiritual emergency. Please, take a seat. So why do you think this spirit was so angry? And why did it attach itself to you? Why do you think it's refusing to leave? Do you and the spirit have a past history? Did you know or have a relationship with the departed? Do you know them personally? I told her, yes, I believe it was a young boy I knew from school. I witnessed his death when he fell in front of a car. As he was falling, he stared straight at me, into my eyes just before he died. I see. This is how you two are connected. But why is he so upset with you? He keeps saying you betrayed him. You are the reason he is dead. He said he thought you were his friend. He looked up to you and trusted you. He thought you were his protector, his savior. But he was wrong, and he found out about the real you too late. He said something about your dark behavior. What happened between you and him? Tell me the truth, or the cleansing won't work. I told her, okay. When I was younger, I was a morbid child. But my true feelings, I needed to hide. I would be polite and smile, but I harbor dark thoughts deep inside. I had a desire to see someone dead. I really don't know why. But this is something I needed to see. Something about death fascinated me. 
I could tell the psychic was creeped out, but I continued with my story. I started off harming little animals. Birds, cats, dogs, frogs. As long as I could overpower them and they didn't put up much of a fight, I made sure they were small. But the bloodlust was not satisfied with these insignificant little things. I wanted to see the death of a human being. I tried to find people being deleted online, but everything I saw was fake. Nothing I saw gave me a thrill. I couldn't relate. But one day, I saw some bigger kids bullying this little small boy. I watched them punch, hit, and kick. I felt so much joy. He was what I was looking for. I attacked the bigger boys and told them to leave him alone. I threatened them if I saw them fucking with him again. They would be in real big trouble. The small kid was so grateful. He would follow me everywhere. He placed his complete trust in me. He was always by my side. He wouldn't leave. He saw me as his friend, but I saw him as prey. The whole time I was trying to think of when and how I would cause his death. The psychic just sat there with a disgust look on her face. I didn't care. Anyway. The last day after school, the little boy was walking, following me home. The skies were gray and cloudy, and it started to rain really hard. It was the perfect scenario. I tagged him and said, you're it. Then I took off running. He ran after me, splashing through puddles. We were two kids having fun as cars raced by in the street. I slowed down and let him catch up to me. My adrenaline was pumping knowing what I was about to do. But I couldn't control my bloodlust. I had to continue. He tagged me and said, Now you're it. With a big smile on his face. As we played in the rain. Suddenly, I grabbed him by his little arms before he could run away. I stared him square in his eyes and told him, Yes, I'm more than it. I am death. I pushed him as hard as I could into the street. He fell backwards as he stared at me in shocking disbelief. I watched the car hit him at a high speed. I could feel my desire to see someone die, coming into fruition finally. When it was done, I felt so much relief. I was pleased. After that, I no longer had a need to see someone die. My bloodlust was appeased. The psychic stood up instantly. She gave me my money back and told me to leave. I can't help you. You don't need a spiritual cleansing. You need a priest. The little boy isn't following you. You are holding on to his soul and you are the one who won't let go. This is why he is pissed. He can't move on. You keep reliving what you did to him over and over again. As you told your story, you were reliving just from the thought. You are just awful. Please leave my shop and never return. When I made it home, I washed my hands of the blood of the psychic. Now there's two souls trapped that I won't let go. They will be a part of my memory now and forevermore.